finally it's in my hands. This is Christian Daniels follow up to their uh, Fernando Chelsea boot. This is the Larry lace up boot. Here are my first impressions. G'day, welcome to Bootlosophy, uh, and I acknowledge the traditional custodians of Wajak country, which is where I live. Now, for those of you who don't know, Christian Daniel uh, as a brand only started in uh, 2022 when they uh, launched with a Kickstarter campaign uh, for their uh, Fernando Chelsea boot, which I've got in black here. They also came uh, in maple, and I chose the Dr. Soul a half sole because I didn't have any at the time. Uh, so what followed this came uh, their Larry lace-up boot. Uh, this is in Wicket and Craig's russet leather, which I'll tell you a little bit about. But it's still made in Leon in Mexico. Now, I I'm unclear whether or not um, uh, Christian, from Christian Daniel, has uh, uh, actually still contracted uh, to a factory or he's actually brought manufacturing in-house which is his intention uh, but whichever it is uh, it's uh, still currently being made in Leon in Mexico uh, this is their second model uh, as I said the lace-up Larry boot uh, it's available in this Wicket and Craig uh, uh, russet leather as well as in a buck brown veg tan leather uh, I'm not sure the tannery of that one uh, but let's have a look at what's in the box now, obviously, I've already opened the box, but uh, what came with it, apart from the boots, were a couple of uh, business cards from Christian Daniel uh, and also from Dale's Leatherworks because uh, included in the package is a cuff from uh, Dale's Leatherworks as well as uh, the key ring from Dale's Leatherworks. So these are great little uh, free gifts. Uh, and on top of that, the boots came in plastic bags. Um, I'm not quite sure about that because I think sometimes they might sweat in the plastic bags, particularly if they go through uh, hot countries. But they came in plastic bags inside these Christian Daniel uh, cloth uh, boot bags, which are, I think, really great quality. They have little um, tassels and in the, in, in the uh, uh, pull strings. So that's what came in the box. Now, uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, the boots themselves and my first impressions. So let's go through the components um, which are listed on the website. Now, I haven't had time to do enough research for them because I got these a few days ago and I've been wearing them for a couple of days just to um, see how they feel and, and wear them in. And I'll, I'll tell you about that uh, in a minute. But the uh, components which I'll read off the website are uh, the construction is available in 270 degree stitch down or 270 degree Goodyear welt. These are the 270 degree stitch down model which I chose. Uh, the upper, in this case, is russet, that's the colour, traditional harness from Wicket & Craig. That's a veg tan leather. And my understanding is that Wicket & Craig is the last remaining only veg tan tannery left in America. Uh, I, I have a, a belt made of this harness uh, leather, much thicker obviously, uh, and it's a, it's a, it comes initially as a sort of pale natural colour and darkens to a, um, a very light honey. It doesn't get much darker than that, I don't think, because I've been wearing the belt for, uh, what is it, a couple of years now, and it hasn't darkened all that much. It's just become more supple. So I expect these not to darken tremendously, um, but I was surprised when I saw it because I thought russet might be a, uh, you know, a, an autumn leaf kind of color, uh, reddish, but these are obviously, as you can see, uh, quite a natural color. Um, not as pale, uh, uh, mid sort of level brown as a brown chrome excel, as, as natural chrome excel. Um, but in the veg tan, uh, it has that sandy sort of color. What else? Uh, the insole is veg tan leather. The midsole is veg tan leather. The laces, thin round cord, uh, color matched from guarded goods. So these are my first guarded goods laces. That's interesting. Has a steel shank. Uh, to give it arch support and stability down there. Uh, the outsole is a Vibram Eaton uh, outsole, which is very similar to day night. I mean, it, it you know, looks like day night. But the rubber composition, I actually like. I think these are my first Eaton uh, soles from Vibram. And I find the shock absorption on this 
and the grip quite a bit better than than original day night uh, it's a little bit softer in composition and because of that i think the grip is is a little more secure um, and it's completely resolvable because it's either stitched down or uh, goodyear welted first impressions I i'm impressed by the wicket and craig veg tan leather it's actually quite thin in the boot it's less than two millimeters um, and it and because of that, it feels really quite supple in the shaft. Uh, it's unlined in the shaft and um, lined with leather in the vamp area, which makes it a little bit more, um, a little less soft and supple in the vamp than it is in the shaft. Um, as you can actually see, just from a few days where I'm already starting to roll the leather in the shaft uh, as, it, as it grips my ankle and, and fits me. Um, it's a brogue pinked cap toe as you can see it's got the pinking and the broguing and it's stitched down uh, I don't believe it's a real cap toe I think there's a piece of leather that comes down the vamp and then the cap toe uh, it has I believe a thermoplastic uh, toe puff uh, although I think it has a leather um, heel counter can't be sure about that single piece heel counter uh, heel backstay uh, which I think makes it look quite elegant uh, all brass eyelets quite small actually um, they're not they're not huge eyelets which again makes it reasonably dressy uh, it's clearly a service boot slightly less than six inches from the top of the shaft to the top of the the heel uh, you can see the midsole is leather all the way through uh, and the stacked leather heels uh, that's leather as well uh, the stitch down is actually done very neatly the stitching is extremely neat and the layer of the vamp that comes down and falls over to be stitched down is also uh, lasted very neatly. Uh, the stitching goes through the outsole, double stitch there, and then a single stitch continues to, to the heel. And as you can see, the heels are actually also uh, nailed in. Construction-wise, I think it's very secure. Uh, there are a couple of loose threads if you're looking for that sort of thing. I mean, I point them out, but who actually looks at loose thread like that? I don't know. I mean, I, what do you do? Run a magnifying glass over your boots every time you put them on? They don't come apart. Structurally, they're sound. And if there's a little thread like that, you can do two things. You can burn them off, forget about them, or you can write on your Facebook post and complain. Um, it, the, the Wick and Craig uh, leather is actually quite soft. I, I just accidentally ran it across my, um, my office chair and I, I cut it. <laughs> I, no, it's not a huge particular problem. Um, interesting thing, which also happened on uh, my Dublin boots from Oak Street Bootmakers. They crease a little ununiformly. The, the right one... Uh, creases on the vamp more than my left one and I, I just think that happens to be which part of the hide is being used per boot um, the feel of it is really good I'll, I'll put them on on uh, feet and so you can have a look but um, the feel is pretty good pretty comfortable uh, yes there is a bit of uh, breaking required to get it to flex where your foot bends but you know otherwise there's not a hell of a lot of break-in required, certainly not on the uppers. Um, so let's get them on foot and we'll have another talk. So the laces are actually um, quite long and quite waxy from guarded goods. Um, actually feel, leaves a little waxy sort of residue in your fingers, but they're brand new. So the fit. Uh, Christian Daniel recommends going true to size. So I'm a US 8.5D. Uh, in my Brannock size, usually with American boots, I'm wearing US 8D. Uh, in the Fernando, which I'd got earlier, I went true to size and the 8.5D fitted really well. Strangely enough, in these, um, they're a little bit bigger in feel than the Fernandos, although I also went true to size and took 8.5D. It's the same last, so I can't say it's due to the last. I think it might be due to the lasting on the leather because uh, the Fernando, I think, is in Lafarge's Albratos leather. 
uh, which is very similar to Chrome Excel and so a bit stretchy. So when it's pulled over the last, I think it might stretch a little bit more. And then when the last is removed, it relaxes a little bit. Whereas with uh, Wicket & Craig's Veg Tan Leather, I think it has a firmer temper, which means when you last it, it's not going to stretch a lot. Uh, so when you remove the last, it, it sort of uh, relaxes back into a slightly larger um, uh, shape to it. So it, there might be a difference of maybe one or two millimeters, but it's enough to make me feel like in these, I need to wear um, some thicker socks. I'm wearing dress socks at the moment, and I have worn them with thick boot socks, and they feel much better. Uh, as you can see, it's very flexible. I'm not getting any resistance or much of a heel slip. I've already worn these, I think, about two days. It might be two and a half days. Uh, so there, is, there has been some slight break-in already, but there, I have no heel slip. I just did not find any heel slip from the beginning uh, when I put them on out of the box. They're very comfortable. They're very roomy. Uh, the feel under my foot is some pretty darn good shock absorption. So the cork filling, uh, the leather that's used, and the uh, Eaton sole from Vibram, I think are really good in that respect. Uh, heel strike is very comfortable. Uh, so I have no complaints there at all. And the arch support is actually really quite good. Comfort, I would give easily 10 out of 10. Uh, perhaps not as comfortable as uh, really well-built orthotic shoes like uh, the old and indie, but 10 out of 10 in, in my feel. Okay, let's sum up. So now uh, to value. They uh, sold for US $475. Now that compares at that sort of price range with Oak Street Bootmakers and Truman Boots. And they are a bit more than Parkhurst and about $100 more than Grant Stone, which as we know has economies of scale in China. Uh, that's a difficult range to market, I think, because it's quite a busy uh, price bracket in terms of the brands that are there. Uh, Truman, I think, honestly, are, are built more sturdily than this. Uh, they just feel a lot heavier. I think there's um, um, thicker and stronger uh, leather components in the sole, and they, they, they're heavier than, than this is, and it just feels a lot more sturdier. And also bear in mind, they're made in the USA, Truman boots, uh, and hence have USA labor costs. Um, the quality, I think, is comparable to Oak Street Bootmakers uh, and Parkers as well. Um, they're in that sort of lower range between the 300s and the 500s, um, although this is in that above 400 range. So, look, um, in value terms, it's artisanal made. Yeah, okay. It's handmade, artisanal. It's not in the factory. Uh, what I mean by that is not in a line factory where there's loads of people and, and you know, the boots go through the line. They're, they're actually made by artisans on a bench. Uh, it's a small batch manufacturer, so it's difficult to get economies of scale. Um, uh, but I think it, overall, you'd have to say that probably at 475, it's a bit on the high end of the acceptable scale. I think it's acceptable. I think if you like this type of boot, and uh, particularly if you want to support a small brand manufacturer, this is, this is acceptable. But you have to say that if you look at Parkhurst, um, let's leave out Grant Stone, if you look at Parkhurst, Truman, Oak Street Bootmakers, I, I, I'd say this is, this is in the same price as Oak Street Bootmakers and probably the same quality build. Um, but Parkhurst, I think, is the same quality build, but lower. Uh, Truman is probably more sturdy uh, and in that price range. So value, acceptable. So there you go. Uh, that's my quick first impressions of the uh, Christian Daniel Larry boot. I actually like it a lot. Uh, a lot because of the comfort of the wear and I will keep wearing this. Uh, at $475, I am prepared to invest in a new uh, small brand. Uh, and if you like your boots, I think you should as well, particularly as this fits quite well, uh, as I said. Uh, it's a it's a true to size at 8.5 D for me. Uh, the the last is uh, quite comfortable. Uh, in this case, a little bit roomier than my Fernando boot. Uh, and I, I guess one of the issues that you're going to find is that 
it is a group MTO and then you kind of have to wait for a while uh, uh, in order to, to uh, get your boot from when you ordered. Uh, so it's not available off the shelf. But if you're interested in it, get onto the website and uh, sign up and when the next group MTO comes along you can uh, grab one of these. At the moment they've offered these, uh, no Fernandos, but I'm guessing that as uh, Christian uh, raises capital through his profits, he'll start to offer both uh, in their MTOs. So in summary, I like them. I, I like them. Uh, I think they are uh, worth it, although at the, at the higher end of that price range for acceptability. Uh, very comfortable uh, and I'm, I'm going to wear these with, with a lot of fun. So um, that's it. I hope you like the review. If you know you know what to do, cr click on like and if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Why not? Um, so uh, stay in touch, click on subscribe so that you know when the next video is up and look after yourselves and I'll see you soon.